Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yusuf Hanif again. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We are back again to do darling. As you see, I have a hand stuck to my neck. Oh man. What's wrong with these children nowadays? <laughs> okay. Relief at last. My Kofi probably looks all crazy too because I just slapped it on. So this is probably something similar to what our Muslim brothers from the past would look like. You do look like, you know, throw it up there and let it stay. But alhamdulillah, may Allah accept because we don't have to always look good as long as our heart is good. So we're going to pick it up from reading from the life of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for youth by Sheikh Hamid Ahmed Tahir Zam Zam Publishers Book and to cover a little bit from the last we'll do that but we start with the supplication A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Rabbi zidni awma Rabbi zidni awma My Lord increase me in knowledge My Lord increase me in knowledge Let's begin Bismillah So we talked a little bit about the status of the events that surrounded the birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we see that even the Kaaba was was aimed to be attacked during the year of his birth, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented that from happening. And we see that the whole world was prepared to receive the light of the son of the two slaughtered ones. Mean Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bin Abdullah was the son of the two slaughtered ones, his forefather Ismail radiallahu alayhi salam, excuse me, and his father Abdullah. The whole world prepared to receive the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We answered a few questions, learning that the people of Quraysh used to give water and drink to the pilgrims who made their pilgrimage to the Holy Kaaba. But they also worshipped idols and placed the idols in the Kaaba. The Arabs are generous and fulfilled their promises. They were generous and fulfilled their promises at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we will pick up from there. So at this point, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has been born. And Abdul Muttalib was sitting at the Kaaba when he was given the news of the birth of a grandson to replace the lost son, Abdullah. He stood and said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I named him Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the people in the sky and earth may praise him. So, we'll pick up from there. The orphans of the Quraysh. It was the ancient custom of the Arabs to send their children to the desert. They would grow up there and learn correct language. They would also learn great strength and learn archery and spearing. When the boy returned to his parents, he would be strong and fluent. The mother would not breastfeed her baby herself she would give the baby to a trustworthy wet nurse from the Bedouins, the Bedouins. The wet nurse would feed and train the baby and then return it to its mother. Halima al-Sadiya came to Mecca. She was a Bedouin nurse from Banu Sa'id. She had left her home to look for a baby of a rich house so that she could get a bigger wage for her service. She was worried about the lands of Banu, Banu Sa'd 
where it had not rained for months. Famine afflicted them. The sight of their thin goats continued to play on their mind, on her mind. Even her breasts were affected and had little milk in them. She saw that the other nurses had overtaken her. Her donkey could hardly ride, yet she underwent all that difficulty with the hope of getting a rich person's baby to compensate, compensate for all of that. The smiles of, of the baby Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam filled every corner of the house of Abdul Muttalib. His face was always filled with noah. His face was always filled with light. Thawaba, Thawaba, the slave girl of his uncle Abu Lahab, had breastfed him. Now all decided that a nurse be given for the grandson of the chief of the Quraysh. However, no nurse would look at him. He was an orphan without a father to pay them. His grandfather may be respected and famous, but he did not have much wealth. None of them, including Halima, would accept him. Everyone lost hope in, hope in the house of Abdul Muttalib. Amina tried to breastfeed her, breastfeed him herself, but no milk came from her breast. Suddenly they heard a knock on the door. Halima as Sadia had returned to take the orphan baby with her. She had spent the whole day looking for a rich man's baby, but not but did not get any. She had she now had a choice. She now had no choice but to accept the greatest baby in history, although she did not realize it. Halima's husband had come with her to Mecca. She now took the baby to him. He was sad because he did not get the money he had wanted. Halima presented herself for the baby to drink her milk. Her milk gushed from her breast like rainfall. Halima stared in amazement. She had tried to breastfeed her own baby but a short while back and only a little milk had emerged. Now the milk flowed like a waterfall and she fed both Hadrat Muhammad وسلم, and her son. This was the beginning of her good fortune. The time had come for them to return to the lands of Banu Saud. Banu Saad. So they got ready. Halima went to her thin, weak mule. She gently mounted it because she had an extra weight. The baby, Muhammad <laughs> Amazingly, instead of getting tired, the mule sped ahead and was the fastest mule in the caravan. It raced as if happy at carrying the baby. Things were changing. The other nurses were now behind Halima instead of in front of her. She was amazed at the blessings of this baby. The other nurses asked her, Oh, Halima, is that your mule? Yes, she said, but Allah, it is the same mule. The caravan reached the lands of Banu Saad, the land where there was no rain and the goats and cattle had become weak. Yet these lands were fated to welcome the most blessed of all personalities. It would serve as a cradle for the Prophet ﷺ. Within moments, it started raining. It was as if the sky was a mother waiting for her baby. Then when she sees her baby, she cries with joy. Everyone was convinced that the baby Muhammad وسلم, was different to the rest of the people. The mule strengthened after having been weak. It rained after drought. Blessings spread in every place. The goats quickly became strong. Halima felt that even if her friends had succeeded in gaining babies of the rich, she succeeded in gaining the best, greatest, and most valuable baby in the world. Blessings continued to come down in every place. Goodness and happiness filled the lands of Banu Saad since the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The baby grew so fat that after two years, he looked as if he was five years old. In all that time, Halima would not bear to be separated from him. When she took him to the pasturage where the goats grazed, their udders would fill with milk while the other goats remained thin and weak. The people started saying, let your goats graze with the goats of Halima bin Zoyib. Nevertheless, Halima's goats returned with full bellies and the others remained hungry. When the boy became two years old, Halima had to return him to his mother, but she did not want to leave him. She went to his mother and gave him to her. 
She felt as if she had lost her heart and eyes. She quickly said, will you not leave him with me for another year? I fear that he will get sick in Mecca. Amina was uncertain whether she should agree. When she saw Halima's eyes filling with tears, she allowed him to go with her for another time. How great the joy which filled her that she could take him again. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa went to play with his foster brother, Halima's son. The other boys came running back to her. His color had changed. His breathing and even heartbeat could be heard. Halima asked him, what, what is wrong? It is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa mother. He replied, two men wearing white clothing came and made him lay down. They then opened his chest and left him because I was scared of them. Halima's husband ran and found that Muhammad's sallallahu alayhi wa face had changed color. He questioned him and the boy told him the same story his son had told. He then added, the two men took something from my heart and returned it in my chest. Returned it to my chest. Nobody knew that this was a momentous event in history which will be recorded as the opening of the chest. The angels had taken the devil's share from the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. Halima feared for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and returned him to his mother in Mecca despite her love for him. It was a sad day for Banu Sa'ad. Their entire land was filled with weeping. It was even as if one could hear the sand weeping because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would no longer walk on it. Yet for every beginning there is an end. So, that's just to cover a little bit about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We see that it was customary for children to go out into the desert where they can learn the correct language, gain strength, learn archery, spearing, and they will come back strong and fluent to their mother, to their parents. In this case, the Prophet Sallallahu mother was unable to do what? Uh, breastfeed him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her breast would not allow her to breastfeed him. And they had a little milk in them. And the wet nurse, Halima, she was looking for what? A rich man who has a baby. Rich family? They had a baby? So what? So they can do what? So they can get more money. So she can make she, they can pay her more. And she didn't find that. But what did she find? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she found that he was the best baby in the land. And even her breast was unable to breastfeed, but little milk for her own son. But as soon as the Prophet Sallallahu was in her care, as her mother turned her, turned him over to her, what happened then? She gave him breast milk. Mm -hmm. And it started overflowing like rainfall. And she was able to feed her son and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was the beginning of her good fortune. And then the time had come to go back to the land, Banu Saad. And she got on her weak mule. And she got up there easy. And she had Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then what happened? She started running. Yeah. As if it was happy that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the one that it was carrying. And it moved faster than all of the other mules in the caravan. And everyone was so amazed at her. I said, is that your mule? I said, yes, it's the same weak mule, the same one. And she reached before them. And she reached the land and there was no rain. But then what happened? She started raining. It started raining immediately. So we see that blessings started to spread everywhere because of the birth of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And goodness and happiness filled the lands of Banu Saad. 
he grew up and he was supposed to go back. At the age of two, he was supposed to go back to his mother, Anna. So when she brought him back, her heart was sad that she had to return to her so long. Mm -hmm. She had fell in love with him as, as if he was her own son. And then what happened? They asked him if he was going to take him back to Rosa. And then what happened? Was she able to? Yeah. Yeah, so she takes him back. And then as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was playing with his foster brother, which was Halima's son, the children ran off because they got scared because of two men dressed in what color? White. White. And what happened with that? They took him to his chest. And did what? Himself. Took what? His heart. Took his heart out and did what with it? Because the portion of the shaitan, the devil that was attached to his heart, took it out. And they threw it, got rid of it, put it back in his chest, put his heart back in his chest, and boom. The people came to see what was going on. He told them the same story. And there's hadith where someone said that they've seen the scar that was left on his chest from his chest being opened. So now it really truly came time for her to return the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam back to his mother. And she did so because she, she feared for him. Halima feared for him despite her love for him. And the last statement is a good one because it says, yet for every beginning there is an end. So it might have been the end of her, of him being careful about Halima, but it was the beginning of what was to come. So we learn from this story that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was cared for, protected, and blessings started to come even at a young age. And we also see that we know that children are held accountable at a certain age, and he didn't reach nowhere near this level of accountability before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent two angels who removed his heart, took the shaitan out of his heart, put his heart back in his chest. This is the first time that his chest was open. And there's another time, which inshallah, we'll get to that another time. But we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from youth, and we'll see more through his older age to his death, Righteous of the most righteous of the most righteous. So, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open his doors of blessings for us. Being that, for instance, in our own homes, we possess the Qatar, his Quran, his speech. It sits on our shelves. We open it. We read it. It's in our heart, portions of it. So, we ask Allah to allow what we have from what he has given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to bless even our own homes and our own families and bless even our own statuses and allow us to be thankful to him for all of the blessings that he gives us, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. Everyone say Ameen. May there be peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Subhan rabbik rabbil izati am yasifun wa salamu ala mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh